Hi, my name is Reverend Rick Brown, and welcome to St. James United Church in Waterdown, Ontario's weekly online worship service for this first Sunday after Easter, which in some churches is celebrated as Earth Sunday. We thank you uh, for joining us last week for our Easter Sunday celebrations, and especially to those of you who took time to set up your home communion set in a special spiritual way for uh, deep meaning for you, and who took the time to take a picture of that and send it in to us. We thank you. Uh, please join us for worship now. Today's scripture reading comes from 1 John chapter 3, reading verses 16 through 18. Let us listen for the word of God. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. 
How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's Earth Sunday where we're called to honor the beauty and awesomeness of this planet that God has given us for a home and to recognize our responsibility to look after the place. And we know that we haven't been doing a great job of looking after the place. We exploit the Earth's resources as if they're unlimited and as if there are no consequences. But there are consequences. There are some people who have even gone so far as to suggest that the virus, even though it's naturally occurring, has become a global pandemic in part because of our human attitude towards excessive consumption and gluttony without due care or respect towards the resources that God has given us on this planet. When I was in seminary in Vancouver many years ago, one of my classmates, Tom, was a First Nations elder. And Tom invited a small group of us on a retreat up in the mountains near Squamish, BC to experience a sweat lodge. It was a life-changing honor of an experience for me to participate in that. And I was particularly struck by how much of the ceremony focused on respecting God's creation. Every branch that we cut in order to build the lodge had to be blessed with a prayer of thanksgiving before we cut the branch to give thanks to God for the sacrifice of that branch for our human use. And when we had finished the ceremony several hours later, we had to return the land as close as possible to the state that it was when we arrived there. This was really no trace camping at its purest. We had to leave no sign that we had been there. So when we arrived, Tom first got a fire going and placed some large river rocks that he grabbed from the river nearby, placed them around the outside of the fire tight and close so that the rocks would heat up to the point that they got glowing red hot. Meanwhile, we built the lodge under his direction, kind of like a dome, out of the branches and boughs that we had cut, and also with some handmade blankets that had been brought from home. And when it was finished, it was pitch dark inside. We could see nothing. And then Tom carried in a bucket of water and a ladle into the lodge. And then he went back out to the fire and picked up the glowing red rocks with his bare hands and carried them from the fire into the sweat lodge and placed them in the pit in the center of the lodge. And what blew my mind was that his hands were not burned when he was carrying those rocks. And then we entered the lodge and for several hours we participated in the sacred ceremony inside the lodge. And much of that ceremony focused on our respect for God's creation and also our respect for our ancestors, those who have gone before us and whose sacrifices make it possible for our lives here today. Imagine how different our world would be if we stopped and said a prayer of blessing and thanksgiving for every single tree that we cut down for human use, or for every single liter of water that we extracted from the ground in order for us to drink, or for every plant that we harvested or animal that we killed for our food. Imagine what that would teach us in terms of respect for this planet. 
And now, in part due to the disrespect for creation, we are forced to stay inside, cut off from creation. We're forced now to walk on concrete instead of walking through the woods because parks and trails have been closed because people have been abusing the privilege of walking there. And while we've been stuck inside, unable to drive or pollute, the planet has been healing itself. God's creation is healing itself from some of the damage that we have caused. And it's amazing to see just how fast that healing is happening. God is giving us clear signs of what this planet could be like if we learn some of the lessons that we need to learn from the virus. I've been always amazed at the symbolism of a simple blade of grass breaking up through the concrete as a symbol of God's creation trying to reclaim the spaces that we have paved over. And now we see it happening on a global scale. Polluted cities and ports are, are cleaning themselves. Wildlife is coming back out of the woods and reclaiming territory that belonged to humans. The air is getting cleaner. The water is getting cleaner, all because of the virus. It's, it's like the planet has sent us to our rooms for a time out because of our abuse of the planet because of our lack of respect for the planet, because of our lack of love for the gift that God has given us in creation. So let's look at what today's Bible passage tells us about this. From verse 16, we know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. And for some people right now, this is literally true. Frontline workers are being called to put their own lives at risk in order that the rest of us can lead our lives carrying on. From, from doctors to truck drivers to pimply high school students working the cash register at the local grocery store, all of these people are being asked to put their lives at risk for the rest of us. But under normal circumstances, this verse means that we are called by God to make sacrifices for the sake of other people. We will know God's love by this, that Jesus was willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for us. And because of that, we should be willing to make sacrifices for the sake of each other. God's love is revealed through our willingness to make sacrifices for others. And because of those who were not willing to make sacrifices for others, now the rest of us are not able to enjoy God's creation on this Earth Sunday. This whole isolation thing only works if we're all willing to make sacrifices for each other. So verse 17 now says, how does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Did you know that the top 10 richest people in Canada, if you were to total up their personal wealth, just the top 10, their total personal wealth equals almost $100 billion. This is roughly equivalent to the entire federal government's budget for five years. No human being alive needs that much money to live off of. Imagine what that kind of wealth could do if it was shared, what we could accomplish if that was shared instead of hoarded. And we get upset with people hoarding toilet paper. Imagine the health care, the public education, the clean waters for First Nations, the 
internet access for rural and remote communities. Imagine how much more we could accomplish as a, as a society, as a country, if the haves would be willing to share more of their abundance with the have-nots. And verse 18, little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. You know, speaking of little children, I've been absolutely appalled in the past week at the calls by some politicians, American or Canadian, and some business leaders who are calling for the premature end to this isolation. People who claim that the economy is more important than the sacrifice of a few lives, as if the economy and human life are not interconnected with each other. Money and profit for these people have become more important than human life itself. And the ones usually making these claims the loudest are the ones with the greatest financial privilege those who are at the top of the economic food chain, those who have the least to lose, those who are not on the front lines. One of the most appalling of all has been American TV celebrity Dr. Oz, who, in my opinion, long ago gave up any credibility as a healer. He actually said this week that, in his opinion, the early opening of American schools could lead to a death rate of approximately two to three percent among students, which he felt was an acceptable cost for the possibility of getting the economy back up and running. The death of two to three percent of children is an acceptable price to pay for the economy. Do you hear that? It's an acceptable price for greed. Now, I know it's not that simple. Like I said before, the economy and human life are intricately linked with each other. You can't separate them. But there's no question that the majority of those that are calling for a premature end to our isolation seem to be motivated by selfishness and greed, not motivated by an end of suffering or trying to save lives. Our priorities are so screwed up right now as a society. And I'm saying that politely. So when do we get back to normal? Never. At least I hope it's never. If we truly love God the way that God teaches us to love each other in this passage, in other words, being willing to sacrifice for one another, then I hope the answer is never. I hope we never get back to the old normal. I hope we learn some important lessons about respecting life and community on this planet as together we care for God's creation. And together we can create a very new normal based on love for God, love for creation, and love for for each other. Thanks be to God. God of the new dawn, we embrace the energy of the glorious sunrise, the joyous variations of the songbirds, the quiet movements of the morning breeze. Our eyes see your beauty in nature all around us. Our hands touch your grounding earth. Our ears are open to listening. We are challenged, oh so challenged, in these times of isolation, of sickness, of worry, to stay aware and watchful and not be absorbed and overcome by fear. God of the new dawn, on this earth Sunday we pause wherever we are right now to absorb the sounds and sights around us, to breathe in deeply and release everything to you in a moment of quiet awareness.
The new dawn comes with promise and hope. The cross is empty, and through the Holy Spirit we are united with all creation and our Creator. We are born afresh, awoken by the new dawn, one with all, the earth, the heavens, and all in between. All praise and honor be to God. Amen. So today, as we place our virtual offering in this offering plate, let's remember that we are called to live generously and share generously of our wealth, our time, and our talent so that the planet may heal and that we all may one day live free from suffering. Join me in prayer, please. Holy One, heart of creation, we bless you for your generosity in giving us this beautiful planet to call home. Teach us to be generous in our offerings of time, talent, and treasure as we offer them before you now. In the name of Jesus, amen. So when you're out on your daily walks this week, confined to concrete because we can't walk in nature right now, look for as much green as you can find around you, whether it's grass or trees on some people's lawns, and give thanks to God for it. And keep hope for the day that you will be set free to enjoy it again. And promise yourself that you will never take God's creation for granted ever again. God bless, and we'll see you again soon.